it is often during this time of year that the fog rolls in without notice. The beaches begin to empty and eventually the sound of waves in the mist is all that remains. However, through the mist, I can sometimes find a white shark. Those scenes of gray upon gray capture my curiosity. It is the same curiosity that keeps me searching. I've said many times before, my favorite time to observe great white sharks is when there are no humans around. I know that beneath those clouds, something amazing is surely happening. Let me show you. Underneath the fog, the white sharks are cruising through kelp beds. Out of all the things I've seen these sharks do, this is perhaps my favorite thing to film. I don't know if it's because we don't see this type of footage often, or if it's just because the kelp, the shark, and the water all make this scene attractive to my eye. Even the glare of the mist above makes this scene beautiful. What I am observing often is that white sharks just glide over kelp forests and interact with each other and a variety of sea life daily. This is truly nature and it's right in our backyard. I'm observing very interesting patterns among certain individuals. I often see these three sharks in close proximity to each other. Sharks have long been portrayed in popular media as lone predators, appearing out of nowhere to attack. I am beginning to believe that portrayal may not be completely accurate anymore. I'm not certain how often great white sharks will form associations, and I don't have official scientific data to make conclusions solely based on my observations. Recently, a new study from Florida International University shows that sharks are capable of forming social associations with other individuals that can sometimes last years. Is this what I am witnessing? Just watch this interaction. This may be, in fact, a social association but only time will tell. It is an interesting observation, but then again, these sharks are always doing something interesting. Just watch as this young white shark slowly approaches the stingray before backing off at the last moment. Was it just not hungry, or was it exploring its surroundings? Surroundings that are like an underwater jungle. Look at the stingrays in this clip, hundreds of them, and not surprisingly, the white sharks are nearby. Just waiting. The ebb and flow of the tide is like a clock that signals an opportunity for them. They wait patiently, perhaps to enter at the right moment. Meanwhile, I too wait patiently. I wait to see what will happen next. But as the high tide arrives, nothing really happens. The sharks constantly come within striking distance of the rays, only to continuously pass by them, often through the kelp. In most instances, it's obvious the sharks are attracted to the rays nearby. Watch as this white shark turns back to investigate this ray. But I've yet to see a strike. What I have seen, unfortunately, is a trend of human-induced shark injuries. Notice this shark from above. At first sight, everything appears normal, but I noticed a distinct white pattern on its side. When I get closer, it is evident. There's some sort of debris protruding from what appears to be the shark's gills. There's no way to definitively say what this is, but it is a foreign object. 
I began to examine the footage and the photos. It is easy to rush to a conclusion that this is fishing gear, but I don't believe it is. Fishing leader lines do not typically take this form. Notice how loose it is, almost like a ribbon. So what is it? It's hard to say exactly, but I was recently on a boat filming whales when we stopped to collect a few mylar balloons that were floating in the middle of the ocean. When I saw the remnants of the mylar balloons and I noted how many balloons are out there floating every day, I realized it may in fact be what's in this shark. I am speculating. It would explain the reason it flows like a ribbon. It's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. From birthday balloons to graduation balloons, talk to any whale watching fleet and they will attest that mylar balloons are found every single day floating on the ocean. Another reason I believe it's not fishing gear is because just a week prior, I actually filmed a white shark with fishing gear attached. This is that shark. Notice the visible leader and how different it looks. Fishing gear does leave other visible scars on the shark. Most visible are the scars from the line that often wraps around the shark, causing injury. On this one, you can see some very visible damage to both the caudal fin and the dorsal fin. Regardless of how the injuries are caused or what debris a shark is towing, I am always disheartened to see these magnificent animals needlessly damaged. No other injury is more sad to witness on a shark than an injury to the dorsal fin. The dorsal fin is the staple of a great white shark. As you can see here, the fin on this shark, filmed just last week, is very damaged. Here, you can actually see the fin is bent over. The tags you see on its right side belong to the shark lab at California State Long Beach. With this shark having been tagged, it does give scientists a better opportunity to monitor the shark's movements and the healing process. A great white shark's dorsal fin is possibly one of the most treasured icons in the animal kingdom. It's a symbol of dominance, of resilience, and the survival of four mass extinction events. To see one needlessly damaged is truly a thing of sadness. As I continue to observe white sharks, I'm learning more and more about them, often observing things I've never seen before. Later this month, I am meeting with a few experts in shark behavior to explain what the shark in the following clip is doing. Take a look at this. It's apparent the shark is expelling matter through its gills. It's behavior I've never observed before. What do you think it is? Let me know in the comments. Every behavior I've observed has been during the day. But into the night, that's when and where I think even more exciting things are going to happen. I am working on exploring these sharks into the night. That is the next step. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking and subscribing. I've included citations to the studies and data shared in this video in the description below.